Now we had a, a bit of a, a, di- a different kind of episode last time. We did. We it was a departure. I think that's probably good. It's probably you know? Once in a while, maybe I don't know. We'll see if people like it. If they if they do, maybe we'll do more of them. If they don't, well, I think people Fuck come them. to these podcasts because they want to learn something mm. about life, and they want to learn from us uh, because they know how wise, wizened, mm-hmm. we we are. Sure, um, and they trust uh anything we say so you know we could do i I think it it behooves us and uh the fans of the podcast to uh, take on a bunch of different subjects we could really educate people through this uh through this podcast yes you know what i mean i'll tell you what about last week's thing i was like sort of thinking about the conversation we had and i felt bad about specifically naming the kid from my high school his well, we name. could beep it out. I think maybe we ought to. Only yeah. because it's like, then that's still, then I'm just passing down the bullying. Now mm. I have the upper hand and I'm slamming down the bullying. Yeah. yeah. And bullying only stops when someone takes the high road. Mm. So you want to take the high road? You want to take that? the high road. We'll, we'll go be, back yeah, and beep, beep his last name out. Leave his first name. Okay. Beep his last name out. Great. Yeah. How are you, you going to do that with Brendan McPoyle? Can't do Brent, that. I love Brendan McPoyle, okay? Brendan McPoyle is... Don't he, lie. He's my buddy, man. I just like, I feel bad that, he was. you know... Yeah, he yeah but, but uh, to me, <laughs> he shouldn't be. Uh, to me, it's like you, you're, holy you're, shit, what's Rob, up? That what's cat up? is giant. You're yeah, a giant cat. In your I yard. got a big, beautiful cat. I love him. I love that cat. Huh. What kind of cat is that? It's a badass street cat, even though he looks regal and beautiful. Wow. I'm not a cat. Glenn knows I'm not a cat person. I lived with him for years with cats, and this yeah. this fucking cat, I love this cat. Yeah. What is it with it's with the big. smell of cat shit being a thousand times worse than? dog shit it's not it's just it's in the house oh maybe that's yeah you know, your dogs yeah. aren't shitting in the house into a litter box like so you know it smells yeah. up the whole this, this cat yeah. doesn't shit inside anymore yeah oh, he, he, only, yeah. he only shits outside the cats are brown now which is the yes. line from oh, this episode it's yes. a good segue the so cats are brown now So let's talk about uh, miracle. Mir- what is the title? The gang, the gang exploits a miracle. The gang exploits a miracle. <laughs> exploits. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. What do you guys remember about this episode? I mean, I, 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 I well, first of all, I mean, most significantly, it's the introduction of uh, Rickety Cricket. Mm-hmm. The, yes. Probably right. That's probably the most significant. David thing Hornsby. About I'm sure we've discussed him on this podcast already. Uh, who's a brilliant actor and writer. And really been with us from the beginning, uh, you was, know, giving us tons of funny ideas and and doing a lot of great writing. And he was the first person to write on the show. I mean, we we tried to like we tried to hire out a couple uh, some people. To well, write this scripts, episode but. we did hire two writers. Yeah, and they did a pass at this episode, and we used a chunk of their material. Oh, yes. that's right, right, right. Yeah, they were Chris Eric, Romano and Eric, Eric Falconer. Falconer. Yeah. Right, yeah. and I believe uh, maybe I'm remembering this incorrectly, but didn't they come up with the name Rickety Cricket? They might have. I, I think they did. I don't I know. I think they did. They might have. Yeah. That's possible. They had a lot of funny ideas and they were they were yeah. good writers and they were yeah. this was the first time we sort of successfully had someone uh, you know, work with us to, mm-hmm. to write an episode. Uh, aside from, you know, David's contributions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well and Hornsby wrote I think the one that we're gonna do next, right? The the gang runs for office yes. or whatever that oh, one is. That's yes. right. That's I believe right. he wrote that one, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I, for, I had forgotten that uh, Chris Romano and Eric Falconer wrote for us in season two. I, I I thought that the only other person who wrote for us in season two was Hornsby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, no. So uh, it, it's it's weird though. Did you guys you guys notice how like how grounded uh, David's performance is? In yes. This, yeah, yeah. Well, he starts out yeah, very. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a real person. He's a real yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. Like a real actor playing. Like a real, real like really good. Like watching his performance. Like Damn, he's a he's a really good actor. What happened? Yeah. Yeah, he just like, leaned too heavily. No, he leaned ha- too heavily into the bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we th- we threw away any groundedness by the very next usage of his character. I think pretty much. He was yeah. banging on a garbage can <laughs> shirtless in the next episode. Is that the next time? That can't I, be wow, the next. Wow, that's, that's a big ne- jump. I think that's the next time we see him. Right. Yeah. It's it's yeah. in the 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 um the gangster episode or whatever where he's on the streets and yes. you guys get him doing cocaine and, and shit like that. Yeah. What I noticed about this episode was that there was like five storylines all have like every character had a distinct and specific storyline that was separate from the other characters and they were all they were all connected obviously in some way but everybody was sort of off on their own well, even you're, yeah you're mac t- and charlie were together yeah but each one of them had a different want and need 
And I don't know, I, I thought that was interesting in how we took each individual character and gave them their own story. I didn't notice that, yeah. That's a tough thing to do with with only 22 minutes to try to have like, you know, three or four stories. But usually the smallest story just it's like a couple bits. I had a couple. Scattered, like my thing, like my fasting thing. Yeah. The episode. I found that very amusing. I found the the stuff between you and you and me very amusing. I had some real genuine laughs that I sort of was in my memory. I remember feeling like, yeah, this one's not so great. And yeah, then same. I watched it and really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, especially the stuff with you and me and, and preaching to those. To the yeah, you got to do you got to do some really fun stuff like putting on that big white suit and you know the the song. Yeah. Do you guys remember how we came? I mean. I I remember us like ta- talking about that song and like joking about the song, but I don't remember where exactly. I, I think it came almost from. all of it was improvised. I think I think that whole section of shoes and the Lord giving you shoes. Oh, that was. I that don't that think was, any yeah. of that was scripted. Well, I know it was. You know how I know it was improvised because Charlie is. You can see how amused Charlie is <laughs> as he's coming up with the whole like shoe thing. You know, trust in God, he'll give you <laughs> yeah. shoes. But yeah, you can yeah, see yeah, yeah. he's got a smile. You know, I was thinking about that too. I was thinking, you know. It's funny, right? Like, okay, you go do some drama. You're not going to be amused the whole time, but you're, you know, you get together, you're making a comedy and you, you start playing with an area and you find it amusing, you know, and it's, there's something in that high wire act of like, obviously we put a lot of hard work and we take what we do very seriously. And then it's completely not serious to the point where it's almost okay to just be laughing while you're doing it. Mm-hmm. And there's some spark there. I don't know. I, can, I don't know if I can. I wonder if like subconsciously, because I see it in other shows, right? Where I'm like, oh, I think that person is laughing. But I think at the end of the day, maybe even subconsciously, you're like, oh, they're having fun doing what they're doing. I think so. And I think on a show like this, that can be so like acerbic and aggressive and difficult, like subject material, like to see that we're having fun. Yeah. And that we're making fun of the people that we're playing. I feel like there's like a, there's like, this could all fall apart at any moment Mm -hmm. kind of a feeling to it. Right. Which is like, it's hanging on by a thread and that's why it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you find it, if you find something as you're like, as you're standing on that high wire, you know, it's, it's, it's really gratifying to know that, to just know that you've hit on something that's like that's going to strike a chord or at least that you think is funny. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I remember distinctly that priest uh, spitting directly into my face. And oh, I remember Fucking that. disgusting. That yeah. Was. Oh yeah. And I then, remember that. and then we were, we got a little bit into this yesterday, but like how often we have characters spitting into each other's faces. Sure. It's yeah, a lot. That, yeah. Like maybe yeah. the most in the history of any comedy ever. Right. Like, cause that's not necessarily no. funny. No, no. It's 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 pretty it's pretty wildly gross and like not yeah. you know. It's I mean, yeah, so the kid spits in your face in the abortion episode. Oh yeah. The yeah. priest spits in your face. Uh then we have the 1776 uh, episode where like three or four different people spit in Hornsby's <laughs> face. In Hornsby's face, yeah. Um what else? Though? Is there more than that? Am I I mean, I'm that sure. Al- that I'm alone. sure if you really- Hornsby gets his face spit spat on so many times in that 1776. Yeah, he, yeah. he took it like a champ. He really did. By yeah. the end though, it's he was runner. like I, That's I He's like, that's enough, guys. Come on, like, like take after take of it too. Like, how many times did that priest spit, spit in your face? I think I just, one. Uh, I think that was the uh, one yeah. we got it. And uh, yeah, and it, and that like, guy I also, was hilarious. Yeah, and I don't know that he was too far off from the character he was playing. No, well, I, well, I'll tell you it, something. I looked him up. Did you guys look him up? He's still alive. No, he wow. is not. He's still how old alive. is he? Well, I mean, I I don't know. Maybe I, I looked him up on IMDb. Maybe they don't know that he's dead, but uh, he's. But he was born in 1930, as I recall. So he was he would have been 76 when he made the episode with us. So now, oh, he looked bad for 76. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he looked yeah, 96. He look great. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! No, I think no. He's no. I, I, I you're wrong actually because he's got he's like a, a, a theater guy. He's like a real like an acting Maybe teacher. Maybe he was like method. He, I he went real. Yeah, Maybe he I think was he, method. Yeah, yeah, he I was. Think, I remember him being very very good. Um. Rhea Perlman's father yes. is in that episode. Oh, yeah, uh, Phil. Phil. Phil, as the guy who says, "I think I'd rather get a blessing from him." He looks a little. He bit looks more... a lot more religious than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, he, he seems he seems a lot more religious than. Yeah, you. yeah. and he was in Cheers. A me, a he many was, times, right? He was like, many, he was a recurring many, many times, recurring that. character in Cheers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's that funny. Was a thrill. He was great. But was he? Was he? Was, was, was he an actor or did, no. or was he just a funny guy and they were like, let's put him on Cheers because Rhea's on the show and yes. it'll be fun. Yes. So he's not an actor at all. No. <laughs> no, I think he was like an accountant. <laughs> That's great. Or something. We should yeah. find out exactly. Yeah, he he's was. fucking great. You know, we um, talk about a lot in this show, uh, religion, mm-hmm. like a ton. Like because we, we all grew up. Yeah. It's because we all grew up in religious households. I mean, you grew up Catholic. <laughs> yeah. Although 
you were you, your parents weren't like hardcore Catholics though, right? You just no, they I, just were Catholic. No, or, I went to every Sunday. I did all the. Oh, so they were. Yeah. Okay, and and then and obviously you, you're you're well, your dad was pretty religious, right? Yeah, I mean, it's what, all very confusing. The, well, I definitely grew up Catholic. Went to Catholic school all the way through. But, but did you like, sort did of you go to church every weekend? Wind. Did you go to church oh, yeah. every Sunday? Yeah, every Sunday. Every Sunday. Every did you go to now, Sunday school. Uh, no, we didn't have to go to Sunday school because we went to Monday through Friday school oh, where right. we got the Catholic beaten right into us. Right. Right. Yeah, and I grew and I grew up um, Methodist. Uh, church every Sunday, Sunday school. I mean, church was like in in our lives. Like, but the church we went to in Montgomery, Alabama, was. Uh, I mean, it was huge. What it was like, it, it was like a mega church before there were really a lot of mega churches. Mm-hmm. You know, they even had. I think they had their own show, but it wasn't like it wasn't as big as like the Joel Austin type thing or anything like that. But it was. But for the area, I mean, it was it was huge, and so like the youth the youth group. Asked, but they had a youth group, and that whole aspect of it was so fun. I mean, we had a full yeah. That's ba- when you we went had, to the camp. What a full court basketball court. We had like you know all kind of games and stuff. They were always like putting together activities and stuff. You know, so I spent a lot of time. You know, uh, getting- I think the major difference that I see is like the vast majority from and for better or for worse. It seems like more people from like that part that like section of the country that like Methodist born again, they truly believe. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I was just surrounded by people who didn't, but they just go because that's what their parents did and their grandparents did and their parents before that. I it didn't there wasn't a lot of like dialogue really. It was just like, like this the is what Catholic you do. Thing, you can just kind of like check in and yeah. check out. It like, becomes like you're a, a, a part of your identity, but it's not really like something you're right. It's you're actively it, engaging. But there's less worth of the social thing of yeah. like um Explain this to me. So, lots of battles, bloody, bloody wars, Mm -hmm. hatred, uh, pointing fingers uh, between, you know, a Protestant and Catholic, let's say, in Ireland, uh, or just like a Baptist. They they went a lot further than pointing fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Pointing all sorts of things. Pointing guns. Yeah, pointing things that explode. Uh, (laughs) That's just, it's it's just fucking bananas. It's the same religion. Well, it's yeah. the same God, but you're you're like, well, you guys are obsessed with the Virgin Mary. What is that, right? We're not obsessed with that with her uh, over over in the Protestants. I mean, we like her, you know, we recognize her contribution. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, but but I think like, you there's guys a whole hate, thing with the I Virgin. I think you hate women more as a culture than I'm not sure. What was it that is that, it has that, to that be the we savior is a man? No, no, we we only hate women who try to act like they're equal to men. Ah, uh, right. Uh, okay. The women who know their okay, place, we don't hate them. We love them. We love them deeply. Right. Right. So as long as you know your place, you're you're good. You're good with the with the Protestants. Um, um but yeah, what what's the deal like what is it about like I I what is in you what guys' is it mind about what is the person the, who gave birth to God? Yeah, no, yeah, that, I'm sorry. Yeah, is that what is it about this person? How about this? How she about didn't even her? have to get fucked to do so. Yeah, like, yeah, think yeah, about yeah. that. Oh, that's see, that, that's that goes back to the the thing with my with my grandmother, how she said she'd never been with a man in spite of the fact that her daughter, my <laughs> mother, was there to see her at the nursing home. God bless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so she she saw herself in this in that same way. Um, but, I did sleep in a bucket of sperm one night, and I believe that's yeah, it's maybe how. In. Yeah, it's so. It could have happened that way. Rob, I'll pop sure. this question to you since you already asked a question, Charlie. Like, what is the what are the pro, like what are the things that separate Catholicism from Protestantism? Like, it, 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 well, I'll tell you right. There was a guy named Martin Luther. And he uh, he was all up in arms about people paying to to go to heaven, and uh, yeah. there was I forget what the there was a fancy term for. Do you remember the the term for those things were Rob? It's like uh, yeah, I think it's, it's like, like it's, it's, it sounds like reparations or something, yeah. whoa, but, it's, it, but it's not that. It's, no. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, so he's all he's he's getting pissed about this, and he goes and he and he and he writes sort of like a list mm-hmm. and he hammers it on a door in a church somewhere mm-hmm. and the list is like no we don't need to have uh, crucifixes in the church and we don't need all this ornamentation and we don't need to pay to go to heaven and this whole transubstantiation thing where the where the cracker actually turns into Jesus nah that can be a metaphor and you guys are you guys are focusing on the wrong things let's focus on the real sort of like uh yeah was he objecting was he also like objecting to like the the sort of the hierarchy the the whole like you know just bishops and 
cardinals and all these motherfuckers that are like who are these fucking people like i can have a direct relationship with jesus christ has got nothing to do with the the catholic church possibly and And i think what sort of happens people saw that pamphlet and then there was an uproar he i think he was probably killed um, I'm not a historian, so uh, um, <laughs> are you not? Are you not? <laughs> but but then you know, then I don't know. Then at some point, England was like, actually, I dig, I dig his way, and then there was all sorts of bloody wars. And, and well, yeah, well, I think that's so. What's interesting about Catholic school is like we didn't really learn. Uh, we knew that that guy existed, Martin Luther, right? But it was like, well, nah, he, he's a heathen. We don't really talk about right. Him. He who there shall not really, be named. And, and we had we had classes, right, called religion class. Mm-hmm. It was called religion, mm-hmm. and then you would go, you sit there, and it would be Catholicism, mm. and then. Even at like 14, you'd be like, well, this is a religion. Right, right. And they're like, no, no, this is the religion. And you wouldn't learn about anything else, anything except for Roman Catholicism. Yeah. Which was very specific. Yeah. So when you get into like the nitty gritty of like other versions of Christianity, I have no clue. You don't know. Yeah. No idea other yeah. than like talking to you or talking to Charlie. Or I guess I don't really either because I, I only went to Catholic church one time with a friend of mine. And I, I remember being, <laughs> I remember all the... This is why when we did that, the, did the episode where we were like constantly standing and kneeling. Yes. Uh, was like, I remember bringing this up to you guys back then um, because the one experience that I had was like, we were constantly standing and kneeling and everyone knew when to do it. And I was mm-hmm. like, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah. wh- why are we constantly standing and kneeling? And I didn't get it. And then when they went up to take uh, communion, um, they were like, mm, why, don't you, why don't you just stay here? Yes. Like they didn't let me take communion. And I was like, Fuck these people. Like, yeah. what? Mm-hmm. I yeah. don't get my Jesus cracker? No, no man. The fuck? No, you no, haven't no. gone through the steps. Yeah. I, I, I want to be getting both. Oh, sorry, what are the steps? There are oh, steps. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's an educational thing. Mm-hmm. And then first there's baptism. And then there's Yeah, you weren't baptized. Oh, you were baptized. I was baptized. But you weren't baptized no, Catholic. There's, there's no. Some, well, you're fucked. Oh, you're going to go to hell no matter what. Yeah. Well, if unless, there is a hell. Yeah. Unless at the very end. On your deathbed, you have enough time to be like, my bad. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Yeah, basically. And then you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I got both. I went to both Catholic. My dad went to a Catholic church in town. Mm-hmm. And my mom went oh, to right, the Protestant right. yes, church yes. That, that her mother and yeah. guest father went to. Boy. Uh, so Oof. every now and then, I got to go dabble in, in the Protestant thing, too. Yeah. I didn't care for it, though. It was a mm. lot more kind of hippy-dippy. Oh, and you I'm, like your shit. Oh, that's so weird. Like, I, no, I like my shit. Like, don't bother me. Let me come in, do the kneeling, standing, eat the cracker, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I don't no, want that, that was what we saw a lot of Roman yeah. Catholic. It was like, hey, you just show up. You go to the shortest mass, whatever. Like, we know there's a priest that does like yeah, a 25-minute yeah, 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 yeah. mass. That's the one you do. Yeah. Yeah. You get in, you get out. Everybody's happy. Yeah, right. I don't want to do the whole, like, Probably, you know, yeah. bake sale, and then we're going to be holding hands and singing. Like, oh, Methodist, it's a, it's a, it's a light, it is a lifestyle. Yeah. It yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is but there's for great value people. in that because sure. that's the whole community aspect. That's of right. It. And that's the thing that's like, I think that is strange and difficult. And we've talked about this a little bit already, but it's probably the reason why it keeps coming back up on the show is that it's very confusing mm-hmm. for, for me personally, because the Catholic Church has also done amazing things for the world mm-hmm. and for me personally. Yeah. Like my schooling, my education, mm-hmm. uh, going through Jesuit, I've talked about this like quite a bit, but like. My Jesuit ed- education is like truly who made me who I am today. So it's really, I have this like very odd relationship with them. Yeah. It's a tricky thing, right? Because like you said, tons of good all around the world done all the time and tons of bad and tons of people taking advantage of it and twisting it. And and also the fact that it it sort of, it needs to feed the beast like any other religion or cult you know where it was like no we need more people we need more money like it's tricky yeah it's tricky yeah and so i there i remember at the time there was a whole and it's it continues to this day but there were there was like a year where people were seeing the virgin mary mm. all oh, over yeah. the place yeah yeah all over the place there was like a virgin mary and a piece of toast at one point remember yeah that shit? Like, yeah oh, there, was one, there was one where had any visions like ghosts or any, like anything anything of the spiritual realm that you mm. feel like I had a I had a really crazy experience once in my apartment in New York um, that scared me beyond belief. Mm. Go um, go. Okay, Speak. so so I was asleep or half asleep. In that sort of like half asleep. No, no, no. I was asleep, I was what it was. I was asleep and but in my dream I could see myself in my bed asleep, and there was this dark amorphous 
thing floating through the air, floating in, and it floated into my room and I could watch it, but I couldn't. And I was like trying to wake up because I knew I was asleep, but I couldn't wake up. And, and I was like frozen. It's one of those things where you're like paralyzed in your sleep. And it just, and it, and it was getting closer. And as it got closer, there was this like humming noise. It was like, I mean, it was freaky as fuck. And then it was just hovering directly over me. Just like, just like fucking this dark, dark, dark energy or whatever the fuck it was. And then I remember I was finally able to open my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, it was still there. And then it, 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 the sound went and like, and it, it like dissipated and went away. But like when I fucking opened my eyes, it was still there. It, I mean, again, probably all in my head, but still it was, it was one of the, it's, it is the scariest thing that I've ever experienced in my entire life. I don't know what the hell was going on there. It was an old building. They, they tore it down. Were you mildly aroused as well? I mean. It could have been the night man. Yeah. I mean, it could it have been the night like man. the night man. There's, yeah. a, there's a Ghostbusters situation there where Dan Aykroyd's sleeping and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden the ghost right. hovers mm-hmm. over him. Then suddenly his, mm. his his pants unbuckle. I was watching that with my son mm. when he was much too young to, under, well, he's still too young. And we get to that scene. He goes, Daddy, what's happening? Yeah. And, you know, Dan Aykroyd's getting a blowjob from the ghost. And I go, uh, Russell, he's, he's, chasing ghosts so much that he's <laughs> that he's having dreams they're getting him dressed for school and, <laughs> and russell's like oh yeah that checks out <laughs> he's like because i thought he was getting a blowjob dad but all right okay all right, you said he's right. getting dressed but yeah he yeah. seems way too happy he about sure it. is enjoying getting dressed for school <laughs> i just had to deal with this last week because i we should talk we, we could do a whole podcast on introducing the show our show to our kids but mm. but i took leo to the mix and and that's an audio mix and i thought i don't know it's gonna be fun go see what dad does and i didn't even look at the episode but in the episode i won't give anything away because we've done this a million times dennis is betting a woman mm. and we have a very specific oh, shot of him. it's like streaming oh, as he's How did that go? yeah and he just turned to me and was like in the mix he's like what is that and i was like he's doing push-ups and Dennis, you see, how Dennis has like Glenn's got a great body. Thank you. And we have to justify it by making Dennis do exercise. We have to justify it. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, let me ask oh, you a question, exercise. though. Exercise. Right. How, how old? How old? Why is there a nine, woman screaming? Nine, right? Old enough for him to be like, mm, yeah. There's a woman there's screaming. Something I mean, else at what on. at what point? It's probably most people listening are like, uh, yeah, it's like. Three years ago, do you do you like explain sex and be like, no, well, they're, I mean, I've they're, already they're teaching the conversation with Axel, who's eleven. I think they're. T- I mean, they, they they start teaching sex ed at yeah. at, at at our the school that uh, mine and Rob's kids go to. Yeah, um, at a pretty early age. I mean, they I they're got breaking the, they're, they're breaking the ice. Yeah, yeah. But but I've ha- but I've had the sit down. Like, let's talk about it. What is the church's stance on sex these days? Is it still, hey, just don't do it? Um, is yeah. it, are, are they still furious if you use a condom or have they lightened That's up That's a Catholic that? thing. That's a Catholic thing, right? That's it Catholic was, thing. right? It was like an abstinence uh, was I, the only. I still believe that birth control is problematic for them, yeah. Mm-hmm. As is abortion. You and know, that was always the rub. Okay, I won't touch abortion yet, but let's just start with birth control. How, how are you going to have a problem with that? I just... Mm-hmm. Because, well, because sex, is, sex is solely it, for it procreation. Is, yes, for procreation. Oh, sex is solely, for and you can and uh, enjoying it is a byproduct. But yes. it, but is but it is something that is blessed by God. This is for God, not for you, the right. two of you to enjoy. But also, like the the Catholic Church wants you to make more little Catholics. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's, uh, they 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 want more of of them. You know, it makes the cult strong. Can you stronger. imagine that that information first getting out to people where it was like. We will love each other like our brothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Only the poor and the meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sex is really bad and we won't do it anymore. Oh. 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are you sure? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, yes, quite sure. <laughs> All sex. Uh, yes. What about anal sex? <laughs> no, very bad. Very bad. We're going to destroy a whole city where they're doing that nonstop. Rubble, 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 rubble. A hand job? <laughs> uh, still not good. Not good. Not great. Not Ma- great. Masturbation? No, no masturbation. <laughs> None of this. None of this. <laughs> well, I do know. Yeah, masturbation is problematic because you're taking the seed 
and you're and you're killing the the, the seed of, the, I remember of God. I a specific thing like your seed was not supposed to touch the ground. Like right. If it, if it hit the. Oh boy. Yeah. 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 Well, My seed never touches the ground. I try to avoid letting it touch the ground to this day. What if it touches a cup? Oh, it suck. <laughs> Could it land in a river <laughs> or a stream? That may have been the only time where women felt pretty good to be excluded from the conversation altogether. Because uh-huh. it was like, well, I guess we can just keep doing it. They're not even mentioning us because right. we don't even matter enough. We can so diddle we ourselves well, yeah. stupid. Yeah, because they're not even, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's fun. Well, Next speaking of man, women are your property. Ooh, ah, damn, damn. damn. <laughs> so close. Yeah. Okay, well, I like that one. Well, that works, but I can't have sex with them. No. <laughs> well, you can, but they got to get pregnant. But and you if must they don't, make babies. Yeah. Then the women are like, God damn it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you guys uh, something that uh, on the surface is sexual, but, uh, you know, it, it really isn't sexual. It's just about, uh, you know, humiliation and comedy. And that's putting someone's balls. Oh, on uh, on someone else's chin. Okay, let's talk um, about that. Or door door. So, the the network we originally in the script it was uh, that we teabagged him, right? Yes. That's, uh, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with that expression, if you're listening to the podcast, you probably are. Mm-hmm. Uh, teabagging is where you dip your balls mm-hmm. into someone's mouth uh, uh, as one un- would a teabag, and an unconscious person. Uh, and no, by the way, uh, no, 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 that doesn't have this episode is unconscious, but you could teabag a conscious person. I'm perfectly you, sure you could have if well, they were if willing. That was a sexual we willing. Can teabag <laughs> <laughs> each other? Yes, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine as long as it's only for comedy. <laughs> if it's done for comedic purposes, then Thank it's you. fine. Uh, both of my kids have asked me what teabagging is because yeah. that's a popular in a video game. There's a video game out there that where they're teabagging each other. Wait, I'm sorry. What? The game, what, what game are you letting your kids play? Uh, Fortnite. Oh, dude. So you, no, Fortnite, you should get them off that crap. What they, are you doing? In Fort, well, I, they don't play it anymore, but there was a period two years ago where they were, <laughs> they were teabagging younger. their classmates. And yeah, they teabag each other, which when there's a dead body, they like basically crouch over it and they call it teabagging. And so I had to explain, I had to explain what that what is. That is. And you know, this, I, Megan and I were talking about this yesterday. Like, this is where there's this very specific um, and dangerous gray line that is very specific to men and not and does not cross over into women. Where it is theoretically funny to have a, a friend who's asleep and you put your yeah. dick or balls onto his head or face <laughs> because he might wake up. Now, I would never do this to Glenn, for example. You got to know the audience because he's not going to find it funny. I don't think Charlie would either. But I know many guys, especially when I was 15, 16, Uh you know, 17, where if that happened to you, you didn't feel violated. You didn't feel assaulted, right? Because that's sexual assault. Yeah. I mean, legitimately sexual sexual assault. But but, but, wait, to a dude. Come on. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. What happens if Megan's passed out right now? We're like, sexual assault. Exactly. But if you pass out and I put my balls on your forehead. But that's the point I'm trying to make. And we take a picture. That's That's the point I'm trying to make. That's just hilarious. That's the point I'm trying to make, which is that there is a difference between doing that to, but you still have to recognize that it's a willing person participant meaning it's your buddy yeah and he's gonna wake up and be like oh they got me now i i can like get him no but it can't be some stranger that you're doing it to you're sticking your genitals yeah, into yeah. his mouth. Like what if he? What, what if it was there was something First called, of all, called plumbing? You know what I mean? It was like to plumb someone, and yeah. and you enter their you know anus while they're asleep. Sure, you know uh, it's the same for comedy. It's the same thing for comedy. For, for it's not sexual. Of, it's yeah. funny. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, you got plumbed. I, I will say it is a bizarre thing to actually do. Like talking about it in a vacuum is one thing, but like I would, I would never be like, hey. This is gonna be really funny when I put my genitalia into this guy's mouth. Like, yeah, yeah. No, but I, I, I don't think we, I ever even did that in high school. I also but the, never saw anyone do it. The closest thing, the, the closest thing I can think is like we had a thing where if you were sitting and your back was to people, like every once in a while you'd look over and there was a dick on your shoulder, <laughs> <laughs> a dick or a, or a, like a ball, dick and balls That's on your shoulder. Good. Yeah, and That's we good. would never ever, even at sixteen, we would never do that to uh, like one of our girlfriends or right. a woman because we knew that that was even at fifteen, sixteen, that that was inappropriate. But for dudes, like every once in a while, you'd just be sitting there and you'd feel something and you knew you could feel a presence behind you, and then the you presence. knew it was that you knew so, it was there, yeah. and yeah. then you had to get it, you had to slap it as fast as you could before the guy 
knew that it, it was away. coming. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's like, good. That's, you know. that's a good, that's a good comeback to that. Right. To slap oh, the yeah. penis. You're going to, and that's why the ball stopped coming. Yeah, so right. the penis, you can, you catch a penis with a, with, okay. You can get it's over gonna that. It's going to sting, but, but it's not going to, yeah. the, the whole nut sack, that's Woo! painful. Very painful. Yeah. That's, Ouch. um, no, me and my buddies were not doing that to each other. No, <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we weren't doing that. that either. Uh, we don't do that in the South. I mean, the way, like, uh, <laughs> we, so that was just like a feeling. Like, uh, that was yeah. just, yeah, you and your homoerotic friends. Um, uh, I, so, I mean, sometimes, you know, like a good, mu- draw a good mustache on somebody with sure. Sharpie, that sure. kind of gag, you yeah. know, but. We had different kinds of friends. I think. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, but, but I want to say, so I, I do want to talk about this because I, I remember us finding this so perplexing that the, the network would not let us say teabagging on oh, yeah. the show. Yeah. Not, so we so we submitted balls to the chin mm-hmm. to them, and they were like, "Yeah, that's fine." Yeah, what and a I, and strange I, thing, like uh, what? so strange. Who yeah. writes the rules? I guess the idea is maybe one's less offensive because you haven't entered the person's mouth. Technically, you've just put your balls on their chin, and, and that's like slightly less offensive somehow. I don't know. Now I think if we wanted to put teabagging in the show, they would give a shit. Yes. They would definitely let us put it now. Yeah. Right? It like, is crazy as a society how, and this must go back to like a puritanical thing just from the roots of the country, but like, you know, because we were escaping uh, religion and yeah, for stricter religion. We were coming here to be like, no, we want to be more strict about religion. And why, I mean, you, like the, our most popular movies are s- extraordinarily violent with people getting shot and blown mm-hmm. up. And like, if you saw someone's penis, th- like that's that's way too far. That's taking things too far. What? That's crazy, right? Like, what? How did we? How did we come to this? No, I'd yeah. rather maybe see violence in a movie than a bunch of dicks, but <laughs> <laughs> but not but not everybody. But I, I know lots I, of people would rather see dicks yeah, than violence. But it depends mm-hmm. on the movie. It depends on the movie. Right. So there are there is a type of movie. <laughs> right, there's a type of movie that you would like to watch that has dicks just all. all How over are you gonna give me Magic Mike without the dicks? You know what yeah. I mean? Like right, right. That doesn't feel very magic. I enjoy to looking me. at a dick. I, I like it. I don't have problem. I don't problem. Like can't anything. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, we've established right, that. That's great, guys. That's great. Well, I'm just um, saying it doesn't seem right. It seems like, uh, you know, religion got in the way of, yeah. of uh, our, us viewing dicks, especially dicks for comedy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dicks, dicks in comedy, is, that's definitely funny. Yeah. It used to be that male nudity immediately elicited a uh, an X rating. Rated X, yeah. yeah. And now I believe finally that's been eradicated, but but an erect male penis I think might still get you mm. might still get you that that X right. Which I what's we, we all, I don't I don't get it. Well, it's the it, it's the you know the the state of ecstasy that the man is either in or not in that determines the rating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess it's to keep our. It's for the same reason why we're like dancing around the topic with our kids. You know, it's like we got to put an X on this so no kids stumble into seeing mm-hmm. these penises and vaginas. And yeah, then, uh, I don't know. I I feel like the rules were made up by men at a certain point. Certainly, like the MPAA, it was just a group of dudes who were like. It's okay to see women make it. Like we can exploit women. That's fine. That's yeah. that's no problem. You can't really see vaginas though. Like I think that would get that's you. Oh, yes, that you would, can. That would get you an X-ray. Really no problem. fucking way. The entire eighties. Yeah, the in entire eighties. Yeah. It was like you, you, it was just right. bush yeah. after bush you're after bush. You big hair, but you're not seeing the vagina itself, right? You're like, <laughs> <laughs> do you mean if someone's <laughs> taking the hair and splitting it together? Yeah. Yeah, just, oh. just the same way that if you, if a guy was running around with nothing but a giant bush of yeah. pubes and, and you couldn't see the guy's penis, they'd probably be like, "Yeah, okay, that's funny." Yeah. Like that, that works, you know. But if he, even a little bit of penis peeks out of that that uh, bush, there we're gonna, you know, yeah, that's no we good. gotta slap a new rating on this thing all together. <laughs> Well, what else about this episode? I mean, uh, I know we, we've talked about my my weird uh, the diet. We've already diet. discussed the diet. Yeah, we talked and about this that. Is right? the episode. Where That's we why really we yeah really we wrote we, yeah. we wrote decided to write to it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. How'd you fall off that bar stool? Oh yeah! Oh, that's a great stunt. That's a great stunt. Oh, yeah, you fainted off that. Bar you stool. fainted off that bar stool. You look you you 
Yeah, that's some that's some stagecraft. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think uh, just that that's sort of like a younger man's a younger man's game. You know what I mean? Like if I was asked to do that now, I'd be like, Ooh, damn, that's gonna really hurt. Like, but I think back then I was like, oh yeah, I can do that. That's, that'd be fun. Like I, <clears throat> I, I thought it, I thought it would be fun, and it was. I don't know. It did look real though, Mike. I, yeah, the trick, right, is to to not have to not like put your hands out. Like yeah. that was the tricky thing about it. I remember, but I don't know. I don't know. Speaking of like, God, I hurt my shoulder, man. I don't know. I yeah. slept on it weird or something. My right shoulder's fucked up. And that's just from sleeping on it. Imagine what would happen if I fell off a bar stool now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God <laughs> in heaven. Oof, everything just hurts more these days, guys. You know? Yeah. I'm all banged up. <sighs> God damn. <laughs> Podcast right. brought to you but by. But you're fine. You're fine. You attribute it to the uh, ice baths that you, that you take? I attribute. I have no real chronic physical issues i think i have good genetics my dad doesn't really and and also i don't know never being an athlete ever like you not you, you wearing spent down years, a specific yeah, yes. joint you spent years and years and years wearing down very specific joints doing all that even if it was in, in your youth like yeah you know and for 10 12 i never did any of that hmm. i also find that almost every acting thing that i do whether it's on sunny or any of the other projects i've gotten to do I'm going through a lot of like slamming into things and right. you know, just like it's very physical. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to like the physical comedy stuff where you have to really like you get and, and that shit really like I think people think like there is a way to do all those things, all those stunts and things like quote unquote safely, but that doesn't mean you're not getting hurt. You are getting fucking hurt. You're oh, just yeah. not like breaking a bone ideally or you know, something worse than that. But like, you know, when it, when you fall off of something or it gets slammed into a wall, it fucking hurts. Yeah. It fucking hurts. You get bruised up. You get beat up. I mean. When, when we did fist fight, you know, I'm not playing a guy who's supposed to look like Rocky Balboa in his prime, right? I'm not, I'm right. playing the, the nerdy guy who doesn't want to be in the fight. And so obviously I'm not like ripped in an amazing fighting shape. And we shot that fight for... <clears throat> like a week straight so you're doing like 14 hour days all day every day just just you know an ice cube is not a stunt man so sometimes when he goes to throw you into a school bus he overshoots it and you go slamming into the school bus you know and well, I, I got sciatica on that like i couldn't feel my foot it was oof. crazy it was crazy well wow. i can remember like I, so i'm watching a lot of football now soccer in the u.s and i'm so used to watching it on tv and it looks like their guys are always flopping and they're like oh man i'm get the fuck up they're all faking it and when you go and see it live in person like on the field you see how hard they're smashing into each other oh it's brutal it's brutal, brutal. and so i was asking them about like what does it feel like when somebody's like you know you're running at each other and I've heard this from a lot of professional athletes. They say, you know, the big hits aren't the big things. It's like the small things you weren't expecting. Uh, and I remember the biggest, I think the worst injury you ever had, Charlie, on Sunny. Yeah, was that time. Well, no, you didn't break it. You bruised it, right? You landed on your elbow. I got like a hairline fracture in it and, and bruised and, it. Yeah, and like I remember it, it was lingering for like eight months because i remember the doctors were like it almost would have been better if you cracked it completely because yeah. it could heal yeah, yeah, yeah. otherwise it couldn't heal and i remember you were in pain for like forever a long time Those little nagging things yeah. and that was from that was from the uh the snowblower in the yeah. christmas episode and that was we just did a, you we just all did a stunt yeah well you just jumped into the air and you just I happened to mat. land i missed oh, the fall mat. so there was a fall mat, but there was so much like snow blowing couldn't really get a sense so I jumped as high as I could in the air, curled my back into a ball, and then just came right down on the ground. God, ugh, God and then I, and then I was like, "Ooh, that hurt!" But the shot was still going, so I did it again, and I missed again. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the hospital like I think a few hours later, and Danny went with me, being like, I, I'll, "I'll help you like get in." I think I mentioned this. Yeah. I'll help you get yeah. in. I can yeah. get you in. I He's know. Like, I'll get you. I'll get I you. The door, man. I'll get you. Yeah. And the nurse had no idea. Who yeah, was. yeah, yeah. You were saying yeah. that. What? They no, didn't. Yeah. The nurse didn't know no. who Danny DeVito was. No, we talked about this on the podcast. We did. We did. No, we didn't. We yes, did we did. Oh, no, maybe we, we did. just talked about it. In the yes, editing we room. did. We talked no, we about didn't. it. We did. We talked about this on the podcast. Not when I was here. Okay, Meg. No, 
Uh, okay. Edited. Megan says no, and she's listening she's to She's edited all. the episodes. I'm telling you right now, we did not. I don't know what the fuck you're talking were about. Were we in the editing room talking about it? I think we talked about the podcast. You guys might have talked about it. I feel like you we talked definitely, about the podcast, so I thought we were bringing it up. Because like, I think I'm repeating myself You definitely, myself definitely, definitely, 100% did not talk about it in the podcast. It was under the, it was, it, the conversation we were having was whether or not people like knew the show mm -hmm. and how weird it was the people like so it has been on for 15 years and people are like what's that i haven't heard that and then you told the story about danny but maybe it was just the two of us it might yeah, have, it might have been a prior in editing you know it might have been yeah. let me ask you guys this did you eat breakfast today no yes i've you eaten did. twice you guys haven't eaten today no i maybe haven't this is i haven't, I haven't eaten, eaten today eaten two but times. i normally would have but we didn't go to the office and then i was in the car it was a, it was a weird, it's a weird times i usually eat around like 11 30 so I'm gonna I'm gonna overshoot that, but uh, but I can I, I can not eat till noon, one o'clock, something like that. I got here a little bit early because I just went straight from dropping my kid at school over, and then I was like, oh, maybe I'll just find like a little restaurant near you. But there's so much traffic around your house that mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just gonna go park on the street and do some calls and emails and things. But I should have I should have gone to a little restaurant. We should go to In and Out Burger. And, uh, it's it's try very to cut similar. The line. <laughs> what? We should go to In and Out Burger. We should go. And try out, to we cut should go line. for lunch. See if anybody's, see if anything's popping off over there. We are oh, sitting on a miniature set of Patty's Pub. I should bring this up. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's maybe like so. Uh, it was in our office, and we got rid of that office. And you and they were like, "What do you want to do with it?" And <clears throat> Robbie said, "Oh, I'll take it. I'll put it up in, in my in my home in my in my uh, whatever you want to call this a little side office." Why did we build this? I have. Did we just build it for fun? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. just it was. We were de we we got those offices. We knew they were going to be year round offices. We were gonna. We were under a deal, and we were like, let's make it nice. You know, we put yeah. a little. Yeah, we put well, like a little. I think we were also like you. You'd see like images. You'd see like the South Park offices, or like the Simpsons offices, or like any like long running comedy show, and they were always like cool. ping pong tables yeah. and putting greens and like all this cool fun shit. You know what I mean? And we were like, we should do that. And so we put in like a little, we, we put we, in a little And yet I feel like we didn't use any of it. We I put used in a ping pong table. I feel, we, we, put, we used the ping pong table. I feel oh, like yeah. that structure never had that energy though. Mm -mm. That, but, no. but probably only because there wasn't enough space to really like run the show from there. Probably, yeah. probably if we had set that up in a larger space where we were actually run, right. running the show from, then it will have the hustle bustle. I think you're right. You know, of an office. But instead it was just like this strange little miniature set. Yeah. In this little... We ne which we never used because by that no. point we were all married with kids and so we didn't have like we never sat at the bar and had drinks no no not at all no we've never really been, we've we've really just been kind of people that work together and then when we leave maybe we'll go out we used to go out together but we would never like drink at work I think no. we definitely talked about this too like every once in a while on set we would but we never like drink and write how many people no. no I mean we're doing no. a job yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's that's a common misconception that we should clear up right because I, I, that's a weird thing we're like oh you guys probably just get high as shit and like write episodes I'm like I'm sorry no we so don't we so don't like I mean, there are people who do. Yeah, oh, yeah. no, I like, know. Like Seth our, Rogen can say, yeah, can, Seth. can be high as shit all day long and write like amazing stuff. And I could, <laughs> I, there's no way I could do that. No way. Yeah, I couldn't. Operate, no, but you no. haven't built up the tolerance. I think I, that takes a lot of practice. I, I also think I. I mean, we just. I think any drug just affects everybody differently, right? Because I mean, there's no way that he feels the way I feel when I'm high. Yeah, because if he felt the way I felt when he wouldn't, uh, yeah, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. I, I, just, I've tried every single kind of fucking strand. Me too. I've smoked it. I've gummied it. I've everything. Yep. I, it, it definitely can affects. Can you put it up your butt? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, you can put weed up your butt still. Very good.